not followed Todd Anderson's Jeskai Guy Black build. It is meta gamed significantly for this weekend. I, I'm not sure how meta gamed it is for Rally. So what he's done is he has in the main deck three Disdainful Stroke, three Dig Through Time, three Ojitize commands. Now the strokes and commands are kind of weak here, but he's banking on the fact that he has Radiant Flames and Kalidus in the main to carry him at least until the sideboard games. Yep, and the strokes do matter quite a bit against Collected Company specifically, which is Owen's best card in the matchup. All right. Owen's going to wins the die roll and will be on the play. He'll start with a two drop. Cannot. Off two Heaths. He's not, it's going to be Elvish Visionary. Yep. Good start. Not quite Jace, though. Uh, Anderson's deck is quite equipped to deal with the Jace in most situations anyhow. Some notes on Todd's build. He has taken all the creature lands out of his deck. Instead, is playing four of the Cons of Tarkir tri lands just to really solidify his mana base. You see he's got Mystic Monastery in play. I believe another tri land in hand. Idea there. Playing the game early um, to be consistent as possible. Winning the game eventually. So here's Nomad Outpost and Pass. Todd, of note here, does have his one main deck Radiant Flames. That was in his opener. It's very good to have here. And uh, the way that a lot of the rally curves play out, he'll have plenty of time to pick a good spot for that. Third land for Owen. He swings with Elvish Visionary. We'll see if he makes a play. The answer is no. Still off of blue and black mana on Turtonwald's side. You see Todd just sitting on a hand of removal. This is how he likes to build his Jeskai Black decks. We see Crackling Doom, Disdainful Stroke, Radiant Flames, Fiery Impulse, Dig Through Time. Yep, and no reason to act just yet. Not going to roast an Elvish Visionary. Not going to do anything to Elvish Visionary. That's Owen can get a lot of damage in with that if he cares to. Yeah, that one's going to get picked up whenever this Radiant Flames is cast. Very unlikely that it happens before that. And so the game will continue this way. Owen swinging for one. Todd fetching lands, taking some damage. Owen may have missed a land drop this turn, though. Missed a land drop, still off two colors, off yeah. four mana for Collective Company. His draw's not coming together just yet. He's short on lands and short on colors. Though Todd's not going to punish him for that just yet. His pickup was another copy of Crackling Doom. Yeah, Todd's deck just not equipped to punish Stumbles. Best thing he can do is start killing you on turn six with a Chandra or beating down with a Kalidus on turn four. Owen's draw is collected company. He will have to discard this turn unless he has a castable spell. And it looks like Owen does have a collected company, but still shy on that land. Todd doesn't want to discard. <laughs> He'll crackling doom away the visionary. Now, so he put, went to end step. Todd Crackling Dooms. Now Owen goes to clean up. He'll have to discard. Yeah, it's not looking like that. Uh, Todd has two copies of Crackling Doom. Not a very important spell for him to have. Get a chip shot in while you can. He'll discard Reflector Mage. For Todd, the draw is a Bloodstained Mire. Doesn't seem too relevant, but if you look at the fact that it's a fetch land, this plus the Doom will allow him to end cast step a dig through time. Yep, that's very good for Todd. One thing about discarding for Owen is if he just keeps discarding creatures, he's kind of building towards Rally. It's not oh, as wow. good it's as the like, <laughs> legacy reanimator saying turn one, go and discarding Gristle brand. Like, it's not on that level. We're not playing Manila's Dredge here. Right, but he is accruing some theoretical value. Yeah, he passes the turn. Todd on end step is going to fire off that dig through time. So if you're wondering how Todd's deck wins, is that I would be wondering that at this point. Um, two Soulfire Grandmaster, one Dragon Master Outcast in the main. One Chandra, one Kalidus. And that is it. So his top seven, he does find his Dragon Master Outcast there. And he takes the sixth land to go with it. Yep, that's uh, quite good. Owen is still a blue or black source off of anything in his 75 that can interact with creatures. Discards an Antuco Husk. Todd plays land six, plays Dragon Master Outcast. His draw for the turn was Murderous Cut. And now pressure is on for Owen. If Todd gets a dragon next turn. Owen still has that collected company I, in hand. An yeah. untapped land could be big. Could. Now, I, I believe Todd is sitting on one of his main deck Disdainful Strokes here. That's even bigger. So Owen would need to draw... Well, not Nantuko Husk. Yeah, black spell very far from what the doctor ordered. 
Things are not going Owen's way. Not like and now this. now Todd is punishing. Upkeep. Todd will get a dragon off the outcast. Now, if Owen gets enough of a rally going, you see he discarded CC's Faithful last turn, he actually could, could in theory, deal with these dragons. Though Todd's got a, a handful of permission. Right, and the dragons are just going to keep coming. No permanent answer to the outcast. Todd, oh, Owen's going to rally for one on end step here. It's clever here. We'll get Sadisi's Faithful. We'll exploit itself and unsummon the dragon. Some of the motivation for this is that Owen's just been discarding to turn anyway. If he has to do that, you know, may as well cast a spell and get some value. Here is a base, a swamp. Owen draws the land. Look at this. He's got three collected companies. I guess the question is, are any of these going to resolve? Yeah, get started trying. First one hits Disdainful Stroke. If I was Owen, confidence on first collected company resolving had got to be under under 20%. Definitely a low, but you want to get started casting them right away, and this actually makes that Sadisi's Faithful Rally look a lot better. Uh, yeah, he only took one. Bottom time. Todd's draw for the turn is a Jace. We go back over to Owen. Draws Canopy Vista. More lands. See if his plan of just playing Collected Companies meets resistance, though. Nope, he'll go for another company. Does Todd counter this? I don't believe he has the card to do it. So can Owen Company well? Last game, these Collected Companies were just cruel, and it's not any help here. He gets Elvish Visionary and Zulaport Cutthroat. This is nothing that Todd won't be able to clean up with the couple of removal spells. I don't know if I've seen Owen collect a company into a Reflector Mage at any point in this tournament yet. Well, we've only watched him get incredibly unlucky. That's pretty much the story of the games that we've seen him play. So second dragon for Todd Anderson. He draws. His hands now two Ojatai's commands. Murderous Cut, Roast, Radiant Flames, Crackling Doom, Fiery Impulse. So seven kill spells. It's a solid hand. With the dragon attack this turn, Owen is dead the two dragons next turn. Still no reason for Todd to do much of anything. He's very far ahead. No way for him to do much of anything. It's not really what his deck's designed to do. I mean, Yeah, he can start aiming removal spells at 1-1s, one but why bother? The idea of outcast is that you can have a win con that costs one, as long as you don't care how fast it works. Right, you don't care about attacking for that one on the ground. And the other thing about using those removal spells is it, it makes the, any potential value reality out of Owen a lot better. So Owen takes the five, goes to nine. Now he fetches his way down to eight. He's hoping to at least survive and then later figure out how he's going to stabilize. It's going to be Reflector Mage. Bad news on this front. Well, Todd will Ojatai's command. Counter and draw. That was Owen's only blue source, so he can't play another Reflector Mage. And with that... Owen will scoop the game. Yep, the dragons will be able to clean up the rest of the game that turn. And when Owen started casting Collected Company, Todd had been sitting on that Ojatai's command. That was the first window to cast it. And it was more than good enough to lock up that game there. So a tough one there for Owen, losing game one to Todd Anderson. We'll go ahead and go over to the sideboards. So starting on for Owen Turtonwald on Four Color Rally, he's got Murderous Cuts, Dispels, Minister of Pains, Erish and Clerics, Duresses some sacrifice creatures, and a despise. Now, against a deck that's so removal-centric, I would think that Dispel is going to be where he'll start. Dispel and Duress is pretty much the long and short of the sideboard plan here. Not much reason to try much else. I become more hateful to those non-creature spells. For Todd, game one, not one that I think he expects to win, but one that he'll definitely take. Uh, Post-board, things get better for him. So he's got Monastery Mentors, which can be very good against a low-removal deck like Owen's. Uh, more copies of Radiant Flames, more copies of Kalidus, perhaps Dispels of his own, Duress, Negate, Painful Truths. I could see cases reporting in nearly all these cards. Yep, the uh, premium is placed on Dispel. Um, it's, it's more efficient than Negate, and it always hits when you cast it as opposed to dure uh, Duress. Owen is able to interact with his own Dispels, but the, the sp Owen's deck is so creature heavy that it's rare that you can bank on duress hitting. I like Painful Truce to gas back up to keep up with all the collected companies. The fact that Owen's deck is so anemic at just the beatdown plan and that Radiant Flames can wrap that up makes the life loss pretty safe as well. Todd Anderson 
star of the SCG Tour here, up against world number one Owen Turtenwald. We're going to get underway under game two shortly here as we wrap up. This is the end of season one right now on the SCG Tour. We have this and one more open in Baltimore next weekend. If you're looking to come out, though, and join the SCG Tour and see whether or not you have what it takes to play against these guys, we have our season two schedule now announced. So starting in April 15th through 17th, we'll have our Columbus Invitational Weekend. That's both the conclusion of Season 1 at the Invitational and the beginning of Season 2 as we also have an Open that weekend as well. So from there, we'll move up through the Midwest, Milwaukee. We'll be coming back here to Indianapolis in May when we have a modern tournament. And then we move southward, going through Atlanta, Orlando, and Dallas, playing standard and modern. As we work our way toward the Season 2 end of the se season, we'll go back up east to Worcester, Columbus, and Baltimore. We'll take a break for the regional championships and then end up in the Northeast with the Syracuse Modern Open and then mid-August, the Season 2 Invitational in New Jersey. So lots of opportunities for Legacy, Standard, and Modern. See what you have to take against these guys for our Season 2 schedule. A lot of places to play, a lot of formats to try out. New season to uh, stake your claim at those at-large spots on the leaderboard. Yeah, the leaderboard does, uh, for, the play, for the points race, it does reset for each season. We've been following our leaderboard right now with Jeff Hoagland up at the top of it. Those are his results for season one. We rebuild that each season. The top three competitors from each season qualify for the Players' Championship, as well as the top three competitors for all of 2016. So we're underway for game two. Owen Turtenwald, Todd Anderson, second game. We'll start off on some lands. Last game, Owen keeping a hand of just green and white mana. Never got off the ground. Todd was able to take it with a Dragon Master Outcast, but really just take, took it with inevitability. All right. Owen just stumbled for way too long to realistically ever be in that game. So Owen will start again on Elvish Visionary. This time he has three colors of mana, everything but blue available to him. And if he fetched for a basic swamp there, I wouldn't be surprised if he has a blue source in his hand too. Right. Todd, though, Soulfire Grandmaster is going to be the play. Got a clock. On turn one, Anderson passed with the basic mountain. He has a fiery impulse in hand. I think he was kind of hoping that Owen would have a Jace. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Elvish Visionary is acceptable. It's not very impactful on the board, but... He does not. And now, the lifelink won't be as relevant. Nantuko Husk is the play for Turtonwald. You go back over to Todd. And I just love these hands when you look at them with Jeskai Black. We see Roast... Fiery Impulse, Painful Truths, Dig Through Time. I'm just a fan of everything going on here. Todd is going to roast the Nantuko Husk. Owen will sacrifice it to deny Todd the life gain. But Todd does swing in with the Soulfire Grandmaster. Might not see Todd going up to 40 plus life totals. Yeah, yesterday we did see Todd make it all the way to 42 life in a match. It was not a particularly close game. So the swing will drop Owen to 17, Todd up to 21. Todd plays Bloodstained Mire, leaves up the possibility for Fiery Impulse here. Also with the Bloodstained Mire, you are representing Dispel with the ability to find a Sunken Hollow, so Turnwald can't just uh, pull the trigger on a Collected Company without any fear. And you see Owen is making that calculation of his own. He has a fourth land. He'll swing with Visionary. He has the Company in hand. We'll see if he pulls the trigger on it. And it looks like he will not. Instead, he'll play Grim Horror Specs. Yep, respecting the possibility of the Dispel, I like that a lot. So Todd had the option there on end step to go ahead and get a Sunken Hollow and shoot down the Harris Specs. Uh, instead, it looks like he's going to just untap. He wanted to get a different land with it. And here is a Smoldering Marsh. So is the reason we didn't see the Smoldering Marsh on end step there? Um, I'm not seeing any strong ones. Upkeep is functionally similar to the end step when your opponent is representing one mana. There, I mean, you have to respect the possibility of dispels out of Owen's deck. Right. Yeah, there's, there's a reason we didn't see Smoldering Marsh in action on end step. It looks like Todd's content to let Hara Specs live. Maybe Todd's not really killing too many creatures yet. He'll go for Painful Truths to draw three here. Draws 
A dispel of his own, a roast, and a mystic monastery. So now I guess Todd can go for that kill with dispel up. Right, he'll have to uh, wait to untap and get some mana. It's going to offer a trade of Grandmaster for Hara Specs. Uh, Owen will pol politely decline that one. Todd back, gaining some of that painful truth's life back. And it is Polluted Delta for Todd Anderson. He had a choice between Polluted Delta and Sunken Hollow. Both give him access to Dispel. Yeah, Polluted Delta, the best fetch line in his deck. It can find all four of his colors. Right. I also believe that he has a Dig Through Time in hand, so building up the Delve for that is important as well. Yeah, with Dig Through Time, he's got to want to find a blue source with this. We go back over to Turtonwald. Todd now does have the Dispel. He did not have it last turn. Owen played around it. Now Owen can't call the bluff. It's no longer a bluff. Right. Now the onus is on Owen to have collected company with Dispel backup backup of his own. <laughs> Owen will swing for four. Here's High Respect and Elvish Visionary. Owen's hand. Company, Reflector Mage, Rally the Ancestors, Flooded Strand, which he'll play. And he'll reflect the Soulfire Grandmaster. Todd thinking about pulling the trigger on a red spell in response to gain some life. He will. Now, that's not free, because to fetch for this, he's finding a land that is not blue. So this is somewhat of a win on Owen's side. Right. And one thing about the way that Todd has navigated this game, he was using the Grandmaster's life gain to make it so he doesn't have to necessarily use removal spells on the horror specs, so, so that he can gain life without dying and also without filling up Owen's graveyard. So by making this play, he's taking kind of a turn on that. Yeah, he does gain, looks like, three life off the Fiery Impulse. Goes up to 16. Hara Specs dies. He's got to be happy to get that off the board. Right. Owen's swing is just for one. Now we're back to Todd. Seven cards in hand, drawing to eight. I feel like when we watch Jeskai Black, there's just always eight cards in his hand. Yeah. No matter what turn of the game it is. Never seen him discard, though. No, no, it's always exactly, he's drawing to eight, and he plays to seven, and... So here's another cost of finding the red source on that turn. Todd has picked up a second copy of Dispel, but only has the ability to cast one a turn, at least for this window. Absolutely. So swing for Owen for three puts Todd down to 13. And Owen, Rally, Collected Company, and I believe Murderous Cut are his three cards. Todd's going to fetch down to 12. One thing I do like about Tyderson with Jeskai Black is he really uses those life points as a resource. You see he has kill spells for these creatures, but is just declining to play them at the moment. Yeah, you have to manage your life, you have to manage the board, and you have to manage Owen's graveyard. And he's doing a really great job of keeping up that balance. Yeah, by, by not passing the kill spells then, he got to wait until Soulfire Grandmaster was back. Now he'll do that and he'll roast the Reflector Mage. This is a potential five-point life swing for Todd. And with the two Dispels at the ready, this position looks quite good. A ways off of casting, it'll take one more blue, sur blue source to start casting Dig Through Time and leaving up Dispel, but still a good position. So here's how Owen is going to respond. He's going to try to murderous cut the Soulfire with the Roast on the stack. He d wants to deny Todd the life gain. Todd, despite having multiple Dispels in hand, lets it resolve. And this was kind of a bait for Owen, because Owen has Collected Company and Rally the Ancestors in hand. So if Todd has a Dispel, Owen really wants Todd to bite on that, and Todd no serves him. I think what'll be interesting here is how does Todd ever cast this Dig Through Time in his hand? He has two Dispels. Owen has two things that need to be Dispelled. But Todd needs Quad Blue. You know, to tap two, man two Blue to delve for that Dig Through Time means he's taking down his counter magic. It's going to take some time to set it up properly, though right now there's just a 1-1 one, one in play for Owen. Yeah, so, so what Owen maybe needs is another creature to present a better clock, maybe force Todd into that play before he's ready. Yeah, something like a Catacomb Sifter to get in the table would be very good, get three more power. Well, Owen's going to try for another threat. It's Collected Company. Todd will dispel. Now Owen gets to untap. He still has Rally in hand. Now Todd has another dispel. Looks like Owen has another company. That's a very good pickup. And he's going to, he's debating if he wants to jam it. There's another untapped blue. This is super close. Yeah, so what Owen knows is when he cast Murderous Cut, Todd did not respond. But that's not a sure sign that there aren't two dispels. Look at that patience on Owen's side. He doesn't tr take the risk to collect a company just yet. 
Of course, now with only one Dispel in hand, Todd's going to start dig through timing with just one Dispel back up, though Owen has two spells that he can cast. Yep, Todd fetching down to 10, gets his third blue source. You're right, now he can dig through time with one Dispel up. The timing for Owen is going to be important. If he doesn't cast either spell at the end step, then Todd will be able to dispel one while casting Dig Through Time. Of course, casting Dig Through Time right now messes up this situation a little bit. Todd's going to main phase Dig. See if Owen responds. He will not. Well, he's waiting for Todd to declare it. All right, six cards delved. Now does, Todd, does Owen respond? An excellent find for Todd in the format would be Hollowed Moonlight, though no copies of the card in his 75. That's so bold. One thing that's interesting, because Owen did not go for the Collect a Company there, you see Todd finding disdainful stroke in those cards. What could have happened? Well, it's interesting. I guess both stroke and dispel are pretty much the same card here. Yeah, they're, they're functionally extremely similar outside of a rally for one, which you don't usually see happen, even though it did happen in game one. Owen will go for an end step collected company. Todd will disdainful stroke it. But now Todd's out of blue. Here's the opportunity for Owen. What can he get down? He has a rally with the horror specs and then Tuco Husk in his graveyard. That seems, it's not ideal, but it seems good enough. He's going to swing with the Elish Visionary and pass. Now that Todd untaps with blue mana, Owen no longer has it available. So that rally wasn't especially enticing, but now that he's past turn, Todd just has an answer to it, you know, now one way or the other. You know, yeah, it does feel like Todd, like, that was Owen's chance. And maybe he can't play it that way. I don't, but I don't know how he wins at this point. Yeah, like, again, it's not a very exciting rally, but, but the option, you know, it, the Owen doesn't know Todd's hand, but it was play it now for a little bit of value or get it countered later for zero value. So three Jaces in the top seven. Todd wants none of it, though. Looks like he's going to take another Disdainful Stroke and a Kalidus. So now he has... Two disdainful, two counter spells, a Kalidus and lands. Yep, one blue mana untapped at this point in time. We'll see if Owen could go for the end step rally and maybe top deck another copy or a collected company. Well, this is I think it seems like what Todd's trying to do is protect Kalidus from murderous cut and keep himself safe from rallies and collected companies. Now, there's some vulnerability, right? If Todd plays Kalidus and Owen has a flushbag marauder, uh, then it just dies. Yep, that would get him. Todd, did, you know, and that might have been a reason Todd would take a Jace there, but he right now just wants the counter spells. Right. In the next uh, turn or so here, we'll probably see Kalidus come down, but there's no reason to go for it on that turn. Right. So Todd's down to eight. Owen continues the hits with Elvish Visionary. Todd untapping eight lands in play, more in hand. His hand is two counter spells, a Kalidus, and a Fiery Impulse. It's pretty stacked. Well, the Impulse is a good draw because he has the Kalidus. Now, he's delved away most of his graveyard at this point, so the Impulse is not yet Spell Mastery. There's only one spell in Todd's graveyard, and it's Dig Through Time. But he will make Kalidus, and he is leaving up double blue for both his counter spells. Right. Also leaving up a Fiery Impulse so that a Fleshbag Marauder would only be able to tag the Zombie token generated when that Elvish Visionary died. Okay, so, so Owen would play the... Uh, that makes sense. Owen would play... A Fleshbag Marauder, Todd would kill the Elvish Visionary in response, get a zombie, he'd sacrifice his zombie, and then Owen would lose the Fleshbag, Todd would get another zombie. This would be horrible for Owen. Right. Owen's draw is Catacomb Sifter. So that was good like two turns ago. Yeah, we talked about before how he just needed a stronger clock. At this point in time, it, it doesn't look like it does nearly enough. Todd's debating shooting that Elvish Visionary. He's going to do it. Elvish Visionary on, it will be Fiery Impulse, Exiled, and Todd will get a zombie for Kalidus. Yeah, and doing that enables Todd to start attacking on the following turn. He'll untap so he doesn't have to tap off of his counter spell, sacrifice the zombie, and be able to swing a five-point lifelinking body. Here comes Kalidus. The draw for Todd is Radiant Flames. That one-two punch of Kalidus Radiant Flames can do quite a number on the rally decks. Yeah, and chooses to keep the zombie sticking around. No, no sure. strong incentive to sacrifice it just yet. A block and scry from Owen will deny Todd the life game. But on Todd's side, things are going every way he wants. And if Owen just draws something like another creature, Todd has picked up Radiant Flames, just makes more zombies. Owen's hand is a land and a rally the ancestors.
It does not matter by what margin you're the best player in the world. This situation looks to be impossible. Well, Todd has him covered. And you see on end step, Todd will sack the zombie to make Kalidus into a 5-6. He aggressively wants this life gain. Picks up a copy of Kolagon's Command. So here's a swing from Kalidus. Owen goes to 5, Todd to 13. Yeah, so because Owen is sandbaking that land, uh, Anderson can't just command him to force action, though he doesn't have to. He's so far ahead even without that. Owen will play Jace. He's already in chump block mode here, though. Well, now on Anderson's turn, he just casts Radiant Flames, removes both blockers, and comes in for lethal. Sure, Kolagon's command seeming good, too. A lot of ways Todd can try to win this one. He's going to go for the win. Here's Radiant Flames that will sweep Owen's board. Owen's going to try to rally the Ancestors for blockers, and that will be dispelled. Owen waits to see if Todd two sees zombies. the attack. Yep. And Todd swings in, and two games to zero. It is Todd Anderson with Jeskai Black moving on. Owen picking up his third loss. will have to win out to top eight now.